In late January, Ukraine's 414th Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Strike Battalion, known as Madyar's Birds, achieved a breakthrough in counter-drone warfare. For the first time, Ukrainian forces successfully detected, intercepted, and destroyed a Russian fiber-optic-controlled FPV drone, a platform considered immune to electronic warfare. With all the developments in electronic warfare measures and countermeasures, we have now come full circle back to radar, which is what Ukraine used to defeat the Russian fiber-optic drone. Since late 2024, Russia has been deploying FPV drones controlled via fiber-optic cables. One such drone is believed to be the Russian Prince Vandal of Novgorod drone, recognizable by its large rear-mounted fiber-optic cable drum carrying a shaped charge warhead from a rocket-propelled grenade, commonly known as an RPG, as seen in the latest Ukrainian footage. Being a tethered drone, what it lacks in range and mobility, it makes up for with jamming resistance and enhanced control stability. They are nearly impossible to jam. Unlike traditional FPV drones that rely on radio signals, fiber optic drones use a physical cable connection, making them immune to electronic warfare jammings that disrupt the radio wavelengths. They provide high resolution live video. The tethered connection ensures stable, high quality imagery allowing operators to execute precision strikes. With these advantages, fiber optic FPV drones were being hailed as the future of drone warfare, until now. On January 28, 2025, Robert Bravdi, founder and commander of Ukraine's 414th Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Strike Battalion, posted a video demonstrating how his unit intercepted and destroyed a Russian fiber optic drone. Bravdi said radar was the key to intercepting these drones that are otherwise invisible to operators due to a lack of radio signals. We just a little bit made special drone radars that detect FPV on the optical plate. The quality they do is on the distance of 3-4 kilometers. And then the FPV is raising the climate team, the drone is driving us, and the initiative is driving us. After detecting the drone, with an unspecified radar module, his unit sent out a drone to the detected location, which was then able to get a visual confirmation of the fiber optic drone before homing in and destroying the drone in the end. Following the interception, Bravdi has urged the Ukrainian military to deploy mobile radar units every two to four kilometers along the front line. This strategy would help Ukrainian FPV drone pilots detect and subsequently intercept Russian fiber-optic UAVs before they reach their targets. Bravdi did not disclose which radar system was used in the interception, but military analysts suggest it may be a microwave radar system with wavelengths optimized to detect small, slow-moving drones that do not emit radio frequencies. While these radars have a limited range, placing them closer to the front lines, as Bravdi suggests, would dramatically increase detection capabilities making Russian fiber-optic drones less effective. But more importantly, Bravdi inferred that the drone was intercepted using tools that his unit already possesses, meaning it might just be a matter of optimizing existing resources instead of reinventing the wheels. While this is a remarkable achievement for the Ukrainian military, some challenges remain. Russia could adapt its drone tactics, for example, more electronic warfare jamming equipment on the front, hindering Ukraine's use of conventional FPV drones to get a visual confirmation and interception. Ukraine's mobile radar network must be expanded. Deploying a dense, coordinated grid of radars will take time and resources. Drone race. Russia is scaling up its drone production, attempting to overwhelm Ukrainian defenses. But Ukraine has also been developing and deploying its own version of fiber-optic drones, turning the war into not just a race for numbers, but a battle of innovations where one side must outwit the other. In Bravdi's example, outwitting the other side could include optimizing existing resources and equipment, which might be a potential answer for Ukraine as the future of foreign aid becomes uncertain. Innovation might not always mean creating new things, but improvising and adapting using what's available. Perhaps that's the lesson here.